the UFOs and ETs in the Bible? Interesting question. Uh, we got to define our term a little bit, I think, right? So, uh, in as far as there were sons of God coming down, there were demons coming down, then yes, there are aliens, because the demons of yesterday are today's aliens. That's really the bottom line. Uh, there are not aliens from some distant galaxy or from the Pleiades system or anything like that. They are very much from here. They're demonic. And so, in as far as there were demons, then, then yes. But, you know, we, we can't call them demons or gods from yesteryear because that's really out of fashion. But you can call them aliens because now they're from some other place and they evolved. It's interesting how evolution has served as such a foundation for this. You know, God, I mean, the, the demons, Satan gets us thinking that there is no God, that there is so no Satan or any demons. But then he starts replacing it with these other entities. And we believe in evolution, you know, lots of people did. And so that serves as a foundation for these otherworldly beings that have also evolved, not by God, mind you. But they're, they're, you know, they've evolved from a long time ago. And as far as UFOs, well, UFOs are unidentified flying out here. Um, and we're seeing those today. People are seeing those all over the place. And generally what they look like is just some kind of a, a white light. It's a white ball of light or something like this that's floating around in the sky. And people say, oh, it's a kite. Now we can all see what a kite looks like. They're not helicopters. We know what helicopters look like. We're not stupid. Right? You know the people that take all these videos and, and you can watch them on YouTube and there's just thousands of them. And, uh, you know, I'm sure there's a few pranksters out there. Right. But sure, but, but still, just the, the quantity and even the quality of the video is such that you're like, wow, that's really amazing. Um, so in the Old Testament, you find places where the heavens were opened. For example, in Second Kings chapter 6, Elijah and his servant are surrounded by the Syrians. They wake up one morning, and the servant goes outside, and he sees all these guys. He's like, oh boy. He goes back and says, Master, we're done. And Elijah, you know, he's just very calm, and he prays, oh Lord, I pray you'd open his eyes. And so God opens the young man's eyes, and he looks all around him and sees these horses and chariots of fire. Now that's interesting. Why would God need to use chariots of fire? Well, I don't know the answer. I mean, you think you could just go, you know, kind of Star Trek kind of thing, and you know, just you go from here to there. But for some reason, in that other dimension, you have horses of fire, you have these chariots of fire, and these things are, are going around. And in some way, I would suspect that the demons are kind of doing the same thing. I don't know if they're on horses of fire necessarily, but they're mater- when they materialize. They look at these, these fiery white orbs, and you know, however they're transporting themselves, I don't know. But it's not like they can just think it and they're there, but they have to somewhat travel and to traverse through whatever medium, the spiritual medium or through the, the physical medium they're actually moving about. So, again, I, I wouldn't say that we have you know, what we call technical UFOs back then, but you did have these horses and chariots of fire in that angelic spiritual realm. There's movement going on. Uh, angels have wings. Again, why would they have wings? Right? Is there air in it? It's, these are questions we just don't know. Right. You know we, we still know the answer to these things. But still, there's a function for these things. If they have wings, then they must need them. If there are horses and chariots of fire, then they must need those in some capacity that I don't understand. And we're not really told. But still, there it is. So, um, what we're seeing today is a resurgence. And we're, we're really, we're just, we're, I don't know so much a resurgence, we're seeing a breakthrough of that realm into our own. And, and, and those demons are coming through. Somehow they're being able to manifest in this realm. I don't know how they do that, but they're doing it. They're manifesting, and they're up in the skies. I mean, millions of people have seen these things. Right. Uh, you even have sort of uh, more famous people like Ronald Reagan. Mm-hmm. He claimed to have seen such a number of times. Jimmy Carter, uh, Barry Goldwater, um, 
Douglas MacArthur. All right, just to name a few of the presidents, you have other world leaders. You have uh, Michio Kaku, who's a real famous uh, physicist. Let me make a prediction. And that is, sometime by mid-century, we might make contact with an intelligent civilization in outer space. Plus you have you know, just lots and lots of astronauts. They say that every time that we had a, a mission, we were being followed by something. We were being watched. We saw some craft. We saw something. Right? And you can, you can watch some of these videos that have been released by NASA. You can see these things out there. Right? So there's definitely something out there. The question is, what is it? Scholars with no religious affiliation who have looked into this topic of UFOs and ETs for several decades have come to very interesting conclusions. Jack Vallée, a venture capitalist, computer scientist, author, ufologist, and former astronomer who helped build the precursor to what we know as the Internet, has studied the UFO phenomenon for over three decades. After looking into the relationship between UFOs, cults, religious movements, demons, angels, ghosts, and psychic phenomenon, Vallée changed his proposed hypothesis from the UFO phenomenon being an extraterrestrial origin, in other words, craft and beings from another planet or a faraway galaxy, to a multi-dimensional visitation hypothesis, or interdimensional. In his book, Messengers of Deception, Vallée states, quote, Human beings are under the control of a strange force that bends them in absurd ways, forcing them to play a role in a bizarre game of deception. End quote. Later in the same book, he states, quote, The UFO phenomenon represents a manifestation of a reality that transcends our current understanding of physics. The UFOs are physical manifestations that cannot be understood apart from their psychic and symbolic reality. What we see in effect here is not an alien invasion. It is a control system which acts on humans and uses humans." End quote. J. Allen Hynek, a U.S. astronomer, professor, and ufologist best remembered for his contributions in the field of UFOs and acting as scientific advisor to UFO studies taken by the U.S. Air Force, again came to same conclusions of the UFOs and alleged extraterrestrial phenomenon. In his book, Edge of Reality, he states, quote, If UFOs are somebody else's nuts and bolts hardware, then we must still explain how such tangible hardware can change shape before our eyes, vanish in a Cheshire cat manner, not even leaving a grin, seemingly melt away in front of us, or apparently materialize mysteriously before us without apparent detection by persons nearby or in neighboring towns. We must wonder, too, where UFOs are hiding when not manifesting themselves to human eyes." End quote. The overall consensus seems to be that these crafts which are being seen have the ability to manifest as physical objects and at the same time manipulate time and space as to become invisible or perform aerial maneuvers that defy our current understanding of physics and nature. The deeper side to this phenomenon are the abduction accounts recorded by millions of people all over the world, regardless of time, race, culture, and upbringing. Dr. John Mack, professor at Harvard Medical School, a psychiatrist and writer, also looked into the UFO and abduction phenomenon for several decades and came to similar conclusions as Vallée and Hynek. Although he recently passed away, his contributions to the study of ufology and alien abductions is highly touted and greatly respected. He states in an interview with Nova Online when asked if the phenomenon is literally physical or psychological, stating, quote, Yes, it's both. It's both literally physically happening to a degree, and it's also some kind of psychological, spiritual experience occurring and originating perhaps in another dimension. And so the phenomenon stretches us, or it asks us to stretch to open to realities that are not simply the literal physical world, but to extend to a possibility that there is other unseen realities from which our consciousness, our, if you will, learning processes over the past several hundred years have closed us off. End quote. So it seems to be the case is they come from some other domain, some place, maybe not another star or maybe from another dimension, but they manifest, they show up here 
in our physical world. You've had a number of cases where people are just plain gone. A child comes into the mother's room. Mom, you weren't there during the night when I came. There is burned earth outside where the ships have landed. There is physical. It may not satisfy our criteria of proof, but proof may be something which only operates within the frame of evidence of this physical world in the box you mentioned before right. that we live in. This is what's going on here is something in some ways more subtle. In other words, something coming from another dimension into our world, which is very commonly experienced in other cultures, but not in this culture. Uh, John Mack, who recently passed away, but he was at Harvard. And, you know, according to his own testimony, he says, that I was not a believer in this thing. He didn't, he wasn't trying to prove anything. He just kept hearing about these things. So, and so he came to this conclusion that there were these real physical abductions. Very, very slowly he came to that conclusion. And, and rather skeptically, he didn't want to come to that conclusion. But eventually the data was so much that he could not overcome it. And he had to just say, well, it's happened. Something physical has happened. Dr. David Jacobs uh, did, has done similar research. He was quite upbeat about this whole thing for a long time. But in the last several years, he's become very downcast about his discoveries because he's discovering that these beings that are taking people are smarter than us, they're stronger than us, and, they're, and they have a, a hybridization program for them, that they're creating a hybrid race to take over, and he says at best we're going to be second class serfs. So he's very discouraged, and I can see why. You know, I think if, if, you come, if you discover these things, and yet you don't understand that there's a greater power, which is Jesus Christ, who has a much better plan, when I would be extremely depressed. <laughs> You know, I mean, in a way, I'm sort of upbeat about the whole thing because I see that we are getting very close to the end. But it's also kind of scary. I mean, there's just crazy things going on. Dr. David Jacob, an associate professor of history at Temple University, specializing in 20th century American history and culture, has also studied the UFO and abduction phenomenon for over 40 years. In an interview with L.A. Marzulli in the book Alien Interviews, Jacobs comments on the alien abduction phenomenon, stating, quote, This is a phenomenon that is either psychological or it is happening. There is very little in the middle. I have learned that the abduction phenomenon is vast, global, and it occurs with great frequency, end quote. Whitley Strieber, in his classic account of an alien encounter in the book Communion, records his experience with these entities, stating, quote, I became entirely given over to extreme dread. The fear was so powerful that it seemed to make my personality become evaporate. Whitley ceased to exist. What was left was a body in a state of raw fear so great that it swept about me like a thick, suffocating curtain, turning paralysis into a condition that seemed close to death. I died and a wild animal appeared in my place." End quote. Then, in a later release, in a book entitled Transformation, The Breakthrough, he dives deeper into the experience, stating, quote, Increasingly, I felt as if I were entering a struggle that might even be more than life and death. It might be a struggle for my soul, my essence, or whatever part of me might have reference to the eternal. There are worse things than death, I suspected. So far, the word demon has never been spoken among the scientists and doctors who are working with me. Alone at night, I worried about the legendary cunning of demons. At the very least, I was going stark, raving mad, end quote. Then later in the same book, he states, quote, I felt an absolutely indescribable sense of menace. It was hell on earth to be there in the presence of these entities. And yet I couldn't move, couldn't cry out, couldn't get away. I lay as still as death, suffering inner agonies. Whatever was there seemed so monstrously ugly, so filthy and dark and sinister. Of course they were demons. They had to be. And they were here, and I couldn't get away. End quote. According to many researchers in the field, and even the people who have directly experienced this phenomenon for themselves, all seem to agree that there is a spiritual element driving this phenomenon. It is clear that there is a metaphysical nature to the UFOs and the alien abductions themselves. Furthermore, the startling similarities with the phenomenon, with the occult and other historical mythological accounts of direct contact with demonic entities, should be alarming. 